Welcome back to Can You Keep a Secret, the semi-annual Pull Tab Sports podcast, your favorite podcast. I'm back here with my my close mentor, brother, friend, mm. Tom Garrity. Mm. Tom, how are you? Doing great. You got to figure out a new deal, though. A semi-annual thing. That joke's too It old? was kind of funny, but it's every you hear it every six months. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I uh, yeah, I'll work on that. Um, I actually we were joined by a, our one of our interns, which you don't call them interns nope. anymore. Nope, because they do more than interns. Yeah, they're contributors. How are they different than an intern? Uh, I don't know. I think the folks that we brought on, Parker being one of them, um, they just they they seem to have a, a a quicker runway. You know, they they seem to be able to really take more on than. When I back in the day when I was an intern or if I did an internship, it was male. You're a gopher. Yeah. You're running around just doing grunt work. And now these kids are a lot more sophisticated and smart. And so they can do a lot more. So they look down their noses at a regular intern. Of course. Yeah. I like that. What hey, we're not going to involve you very much in this podcast because we're pretty well known talent and I don't want to, you know, dilute the pool. <laughs> but uh but Parker, what uh what do you think? I mean do you like being called a contributor instead of a intern? Yeah, I think definitely being called a contributor is a little bit more, uh, gives me more confidence, I would say, than being called an there intern. There you go. You puff out your chest a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Yep. A little bit, a little bit uh, bigger swagger downtown. Yeah, I like it. Rolling through one of the six or seven candy stores, buying three slices of licorice, contributor. Oh, yeah. Interns just standing outside. <laughs> Running um, for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Let's break down 4th of July a little bit. Okay. Uh, the Garrity family went to this place that I keep hearing about since you went there. Um, old men in the Lifetime locker room were discussing Balsam Lake. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, wow, that's kind of crazy. Because it seems like to me when I was there, it's a combination of locals, which is great, because I'm originally from Wisconsin, as you know. So it reminds me a lot of my hometown, a little bit smaller. But there's a ton of Minnesotans. And they're all like hockey people. Lou Nanny's got a place on on the lake. And I saw Tommy Vanelli when he didn't see me. I was going to run up and push him because he was my first boss ever at the North Stars. But a lot of tall, 6'2", young men walking around, kind of the look, look like a lot of hockey players. Yeah, I, it sounds like an awesome place. And you said it's like an hour away. Yeah, it's in Wisconsin, God's country, about an hour away. Yeah, so you get to New Richmond and you take a left. And you go another 20, 25 minutes, and it's, yeah, a really nice little town. How were the bar kind of, I don't know, maybe you never did that. Maybe you were always at the family cabin, but are there, like, amazing dive bars, yeah. great, great breakfast spots? Yeah. And yeah, so they had a place called Docks, which was great, and pull tabs, a whole nine yards, you'd have been in heaven. Um, I'm trying to think of the other name of another bar, but they actually had two spots right on Main Street that would be great in downtown Minneapolis. Did you get into the pull tabs at all? A little bit, yeah. Didn't win anything, but had fun. When you do it as a family, are you are you buying them yourself, or are you kind of as you know, are your kids putting in twenty bucks and you're doing a group thing? No, I'm buying them, but you know, everyone gets them. Everybody pull. gets to open twenty. Yeah, and you put in a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the uh, you were you rented a boat like this was a whole deal, right? right. And and you had a compound. And I can speak from experience doing this. If you didn't grow up on a lake, all of it's terrifying. Right. The, the parking of the boat, the wind. All I can think about is the motor, like, cutting everyone all the time. <laughs> like, no matter, even when we're, like, just trolling around, it's like... Well, you've experienced that with me and White Bear last it's, year. It's, 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 it's really... If you didn't... If you weren't small enough that you didn't even know you were around a boat on a lake, right. you think about it. And if you're thinking about it, it's not good. No, I mean, and you saw firsthand, like my family is, you know, they they turn on me in a second. Yeah. So I get out there, I got this pontoon boat. Peanut I, gallery. Six people just chirping at me the entire time. You're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. And I have absolutely no boating experience. And I grew up on a river, Mississippi and Wisconsin, but my family didn't do that stuff. And for two days, I would literally get a knot in my stomach because, you know, I felt like I had to be perfect on this pontoon boat. No drinking. Don't do this. Don't do this. Trim it up. Trim it down. All this shit. Right. And I was literally looking at my wife and I'm like, this is not even remotely fun. But, you know, ultimately, that's why we're out there. Right. To have some fun. And it, it, 
honest answer, did you ever, like lying in bed at night, what? did you ever think about like the next day's parking of the pontoon? Like, uh, yeah. like visualize. Well, like, yeah, I got to be a little careful because I don't know who listens to this, probably nobody. But uh, um, the people that we rented the place from, two, uh, two out of four times where I docked it, I smoked the dock. It came in hot. It came in a little hot. Windy, came in hot. Bounced? Uh, no, but definitely caught it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I would be sitting there going like, as I'm pulling in, you know, cause there's a, you know, it's almost kind of like golf, right? I'd equate boating um, on a lake or anywhere to kind of like golf in the sense, if you're at a country club and you don't know what you're doing, people will find out that you don't know what you're doing. So even when I'm pulling the boat in, it seemed just out of coincidence, all of a sudden these people would come out of their cabin almost to mock me. Yeah. Like, oh, you're doing this, you're doing this, you should have done yeah. this. And if you're not a part of the club, they, they definitely point you out. You know you've done a bad job when someone is offering to help you. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah, I've I been there that. before. I've been trying to put a jet ski into the water and a guy a guy got out of his car and kind of <laughs> tried to get into my car <laughs> to help well, me. that's a whole other issue. Yeah, it's, it's a well, deal. What about Starbucks? Can you tell me about your, 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 your couple days up in Starbucks, Minnesota? So I go to a metropolis um, our family cabin, like most Minnesotans, we we have a cabin that is not ours, but we call it our cabin. Why wouldn't you? And uh, small town, no stoplight. Rival city Glenwood has a stoplight. So I'm sure they're, they got probably contributors over in Glenwood and just interns in Starbucks. There is a Dairy Queen. Yeah. Ooh. Um, but uh, we do the theme weekend, which is totally not normal, where we um, dress up uh, – based on a theme that has to let, end in the letter Y. Can we ever show that video of your buddy? Yeah, we will. Because that is insane. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, what was your reaction? So to set this up for you, first of all, for anyone suffering through this, uh, Garrett Raboyne is going to be our guest today. Yeah. He's a big shot hockey coach, first ever hockey coach for Augustana Vikings hockey. But um, Broadway was the theme. I happen to be friends with a child actor who was the day that Corey Feldman, one of the Corys. Oh, okay. So, so the second this theme was decided, this guy had already bought tap shoes on Amazon, and um, and he would his shtick was tuxedo at dive bars in Starbucks, Minnesota, population fifteen hundred. Did you tell everybody that it's a it was a Broadway theme? Yes. Well we sorry. We kinda yeah, I did, right? No, uh, maybe I don't, not. I don't know. Yeah, the theme was Broadway, ends in Y. Um and uh that's the only rule about the theme is it has to end in Y. And this guy comes in, uh he's not there the first night, so he comes in the second night, full t- <laughs> full tux, mascara, like rouge, I mean hair and makeup. And uh and his shtick was we would just be sitting at probably the same type of bar you were at, Docs. Yeah. And and uh and then he would just kind of peel away from the table and just tap dance for like thirty five seconds. And there was one of two reactions. Either they they absolutely wanted to kick his ass <laughs> or they were just laughing their ass off. I think after seeing the video, both should have happened. Yeah, we're we're putting it in that we're gonna actually insert the entire yeah, clip into this podcast. What was your reaction watching it? It's like you said Perry Farrell. He looks like Perry Farrell. Perry Farrell meets Jim Carrey. Yeah. And if that's a caption on a video, yeah. I'm watching that video. Yeah, because the guy was so vested in it. And it was absolutely batshit crazy. Yeah, he's, it was crazy. He's an absolute beauty. So we had a good time. I, I kind of, I'm kind of lame at these theme deals. Big surprise. I, I try to have my costume be enough that I, I'm participating, but not enough that anyone wants to kick my ass. Right. So I did Broadway Joe. Yeah. Bought a Joe Namath jersey on Fanatics. Mm-hmm. I actually bought a faux fur coat, a white one that yeah. he used to wear. Yeah. Didn't come in time. Uh, so I'll bring that into the office. Yeah, I can't wait for that. We can have that. Um, There's nothing else on underneath. So hey, all the contributors will resign immediately and sue us. Hey, did you notice behind me we got a new sponsor? Hell yeah. Yeah. Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. Uh, they refuse to be put in a box. Oh, and they're fantastic. It's really good. Really good. So uh, these guys are Minnesota owned, third generation. There was a grandpa Jimmy. I think the son took it over, and now the the two grandsons are running the show down in Stewartville, Minnesota, which they call Hooterville. 
Okay. I don't know why. There is not a Hooters in Stewartville, but they refer to it as, <laughs> as uh, there might be one. Is it's, there one in Sioux Falls? It's not, it's not, that's not a take on like Petticoat Junction, right? I think it is. Okay. All right. It, that's not an inappropriate should, I, show, is it? No. God, it's, I, that I just get canceled, aged myself. I, just, that back in the I think six, that's what it's 70s. from. Yeah. yeah, but the young sons didn't know that either. Okay. So Minnesota made um, their big push in the summertime is coleslaw. Mm. And their deal is coleslaw deserves a place at the table. And if you're like me, my only real interaction with coleslaw is getting KFC once every six years. Mm -hmm. Really, but, John? Every six years? <laughs> I, I, I'd like to get it more. Oh, I have That's celiac the best disease. Thing ever. Oh my god! Um, but the, uh, <laughs> but the uh, they're going to love this ad read. But the um, basically their deal is don't sleep on the slaw, place at the table, right? Take it seriously. And at Cub Foods, go in get either original Jimmy slaw, pineapple, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of wild. Mm -hmm. They do have a fat free one. That's the holy trinity of slaw. Okay. Mix it with a bag of cabbage. Shake it up. Maybe listen to some tunes, shake it up a little bit. Perfect. They have a coleslaw calculator on their website. If you were having a gathering, Tom. Right. I never bring people over. You know. But that. if you did, if you were like, I'm going to have six to eight people over, how much slaw should I have? Right. You just pop up the coleslaw calculator and you're set. You're you know not going to be throwing away extra slaw. Hell yeah. It's like the best thing ever. Throwing it away? No. Making too much and having to throw it away. So, so now I don't yeah. have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Slaw efficiency. So... People, go to Cub, Jimmy's, as they like to say, don't you be messing with the dressing. They great dips. dips. My wife and daughters are into the whole yeah. vegetable dips and uh, all that the stuff. The dill ones yeah, or they, sour cream. When we brought it home, they freaked out. Gone in a night. So uh, really good stuff. You'll like this. They don't make a Caesar dressing. Why not? Uh, true story. Anti-Roman. Uh they're they're against the Romans. No, they um they were making it and they were hung over. Yeah. And they Made them sick. So it's like the equivalent of being fifteen drinking too much peach schnapps and never doing peach schnapps again. That's I, why they don't make a Caesar dressing. I got a question. How did you drink back in the day? If it's the when you were fifteen, were you getting smoked on peach schnapps? Uh I started drinking really late actually. What do you mean? I didn't really drink until I was like twenty. Really? Yeah. Didn't drink in high school. Why not? Um, because I volunteered in this thing called Champs. Oh, this God, is going to be. It's not something. No, <laughs> just stop talking. Because if you say something, it's I want to tell you what a spirit. I want to tell you what it stands for. Okay, please do. Children have alternatives in meeting peer pressure. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> hey, Gabe, I'm officially re retiring from this podcast. <laughs> and I would. That's wear, what high school's about: is peer pressure, and, doing shit you're not supposed to do. And I would. That's not what we told the kids. I would wear a leather a letter jacket. Which, you're still not involved in it, are you? No bars. And uh, and I felt like I would be a fraud to those children if I was drinking. Why would you not have bars in your letter jacket? Because you didn't earn them? I right? only lettered one year. Oh, come on. All conference honorable mention. Come on, that's awful. Big school. You know, that's a made up thing, by the way. But we'll talk about that in the next Big podcast. school. Um, so uh, I, I, we don't have any closure on this story. But if, if I'm not at my best today, it's because maybe Kirill Kaprizov's a a political prisoner in Russia. I don't know what's happening there. You you think it's going to be fine? I, I mean, again, I don't know nothing from nothing, but I know enough to know that he's I not, think it's going to be fine. Yeah, know? he's not going to be. No. He's not just going to disappear. I can't. I mean, again, I, you told me to look for it, and I tried, but, you know, I'm not very tech savvy, so I couldn't really find anything. But well, I, I would think just, it's going to be fine. Who knows? Parker, is it going to be fine? I think it'll be fine. Okay, so Kirill's going to be fine. We'll, we'll hit that note. Um, hey, when you were on the boat in uh, Balsam, did you bring out – Boat snacks, yeah, and boat drinks, yeah. Okay, what were your? Give me a best thing to drink on the boat, and give me your best boat snacks. Well, I told you this earlier. My family would freak out because they said you're not supposed to drink on the boat, which you know I know better, but so I was careful. They didn't so want you me telling drinking. you telling me you're not supposed to drink on the boat is the same thing as not having peer pressure in high school. That's exactly what you do on a boat. You drink, right? And so I, even I, when you're driving, I, I the wish boat. champs was around because I actually drank. So um, I didn't have any alternatives. And um, so I drink a little gin and tonic, which is a great summer drink. Kids are drinking bourbon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's, you know, water and some soda and some juice. And then, you know, we do all the stuff like cheese and sausage and chips. and Summer sausage? Yeah, just kind of 
junk, you know. Just uh, have... Did you do cheese balls or cheese puffs? <laughs> Got to tell you, I'm not a big fan of anything that has the word balls in it. Really? Yeah. And does that make me a bad person? I want to so see if say, that's say, an accurate I, this statement. This is a cheat. What? Uh, meatballs? Oh, you're right. I'm wrong. Okay. But cheese, cheese and balls is a better way to put it because I just can't do a cheese ball. But no, just, you know, just like normal crap. What about you? You think I was referring to the ball of cheese. I was referring to the giant plastic container with cheese balls in it. The puffed, like um, like a chip. It's not a chip, but a little orange ball. Huh. Oh, yeah. Those great are great on those, a boat. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah. Peanut butter pretzel is also great on a boat. <laughs> we, um, I can't wait to get this fucking coach on. We had dried beef sandwiches. <laughs> what, 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 what's, what's a dried beef sandwich? It's great. So we had, uh, what's that fancy bread? Um, King's Hawaiian. Oh, little yeah, that is good stuff. I couldn't eat it because that I, is fancy, by the way. I have celiac disease, so I couldn't eat it. But they and then they had dried beef on it that we got from the Glenwood Meat Locker. Oh, see, that's the one nice thing about going to those small towns. They know their beef. They know they, they know their meat and cheese and beef. Absolutely, and beer. Does Sioux so. Falls have a good meat locker? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I, I think it's called. It was actually featured on one of those food shows. Um, I want to say it's Lucky's, but it's not Lucky's. It's something like that. Well, Parker's tapping away at it right now. He's That's gonna, why we have the producer. He's going to roll it in. But yeah, they're, they've got some great spots like that there. Hey, so the one of the lodge, things. What's it called? The Meat Lodge? Yeah, well, it makes sense to anything that says Meat and Lodge, and it works for me. What? Uh, so do you know the four faces that are on Mount Rushmore? Oh my God, that's a fantastic question. I don't think I do. So, so here, so I, I I'm didn't. Embarrassed. That's embarrassing to say I don't know that. So I was going to ask Raboin the question, and then I was like, that seems like it could go horribly because he probably doesn't know. And then I thought about it. I got him right, but I was so, nervous about. Let it. me see if, if these are uh, Abe Lincoln. Yep. George Washington. Yep. Teddy Roosevelt. Yep. You're going to get it. And. Uh, you're gonna Thomas Jeff no yeah. Thomas Jefferson yeah. really yeah. yeah okay so now if we ask him same amount as dumb as you thought I was now if we ask him both of us knew and he didn't so it's truly bullying <laughs> which I like um, he should, if he had some if he was cool he'd be like my face is gonna be on there in about five years yeah or my Hobie Baker award just, winner just rip it off you take which which one would you take off to put his face on it seems like it's Jefferson I think he's got some stuff going on Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> He does. Look it up. Don't you look it up. I don't wow. want to talk about it on the podcast. Wow. The, uh, I totally go uh, George Washington. G-Dub, just because he's too old. Well, he's only on the dollar. Yeah, anyway. Thoughts on fireworks. Do you, are, do you like them? Anti. I think they're stupid. I, well, because they're everywhere. I mean, back in the day, it used to be cool. And every single day, you know, baseball games, everywhere you go, there's fireworks. And no innovation. It's not that big of a deal anymore. No innovation at all. But I suppose, that, you know, but kids love them, right? So, I mean, kids, I think, and, you know, whatever. So, when I was involved in these baseball teams, we had a fireworks every Friday night. Yeah. And it really gets boring. And they were good fireworks, too. But, yeah, I mean, it's just the same old, same old. But, I mean, it's a part of the whole shebang, right? Yeah, I, I don't think they're great. I uh, Okay, a couple things before we get coach on. Um, I, I heartily recommend a television show called The Old Man. Yeah, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. The Dude. FX. I like him. He's cool. Have you watched it? No, but I've seen, I've heard it's good. I've Home, seen little trailers. Homeland-like. Yeah, it looks good. He's a CIA guy, right? Yep. And um, <clears throat> the story's kind of given to you in increments, so you're you're kind of uh, flying blind. Yeah. It's cool. Um, did you ever do Animal Kingdom? No, but I've seen, I've seen pieces of episodes. Great show. It's like a gang in California, right? Yeah, family. Um, little Point Break-ish. Yeah, like Point Break mixed with uh, um, What's the Hills Are Alive. With um, the Sound of Music? Yeah, like it is. It's like Point Break with the Sound of Music, oh, that's the cool. Van Traps. That's um, Alan cool. Barkin was Smurf. Um, it's it's a good show. Uh, <laughs> you you are doing Stranger Things like the rest of the young people. It's great. Yeah, because I, I like to live to be younger than I am. You are young. <laughs> I tell you what, it's fantastic. I can't say anything because Gabe hasn't gotten through it, but it is fantastic. So big fan. So how would you recommend it? I haven't watched it. All I've heard is nostalgia music. It's like yeah. it's like you're watching the 80s or 90s or whatever. What would be? Why would you tell someone to watch it? 
I mean, again, it's just the, again, it's kind of funny because so like young kids like watching it, but then people my age, because it's kind of that time and era that we grew up in. So it's really for everybody, but it, from my perspective, I mean, it's really, Gabe, you jump in, I mean, it's really well written. Uh, the plots are great. I mean, it, they've had a little lull in, in between a couple seasons, but everything really connects. It's suspenseful. It's the characters are really likable. You know, you're rooting for them and kind of the villains are really bad villains. So it's just great. It's really fun, entertaining. And you like the boys as well. I like the boys. Yeah, that's a completely different bag of nuts. This no, is no, the same no one intended. I was watching. It's the it's the superheroes, but they're like bad. Yeah, they're bad dudes. They're like, or they're like real people that are superheroes. Well, no, it's they're 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 superheroes that are bad dudes. Yeah, and then there's I a group, there's that. a group of people that are trying to stop them because they know they're frauds. But it ties in. It ties in all the social media and you know what I mean? Like yep. it's very hip to the current way things are, but it's extremely violent and it's extremely messed up. I mean, some stuff on there is really messed up. I would not encourage anybody um, that's not, you know, is worried about that stuff. You should not let your kids watch it. It's completely an adult, an adult deal. That sounds good. The uh, okay, Elvis Top Gun. Um, which one did you like better, and why? I liked them both. Um, I liked them both, but I think Top Gun was just blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. I, Elvis was great. I really liked it, but Top Gun was just Maverick. Was just you know that's like those are those movies that come around around them every few years that you really get geek to watch, and it was great. How about you? Did you like Maverick? You didn't like it. You didn't like it as much as the first one, right? I didn't like it as much as the original, but I think for this new generation, it is basically. It's not even like Top Gun two. It's just like a new Top Gun for them, right. which I think is cool. The Elvis movie was long. You went uh, and watched it. I did. I uh, the only issue I had with it was you know the last two minutes when you this is not a spoiler, but you see the real Elvis. Yeah. I felt him more than I felt the the actor the whole two hours and 38 minutes before. It was almost like he was doing an impression the whole time. Oh, really? And I didn't ever, like El, Elvis is so charismatic. I didn't, he didn't bring him to life for me enough. Hmm. But it was, it was, it was fun. I mean, it's a big movie just like the other ones. Good to see people going back to the theater. Yeah. Where do you go to your movies? We can do White Bear usually. I, I went to the Alamo Draft House. Have you been to the Alamo Draft House in Woodbury? Fantastic. You order food and they deliver yep. it to you? Yeah. What did you get? What did I get? I think I got pizza, drink. But, you know, the Marcus Theater, the one that we go to in Oakdale, there was a shooting there last week. So that's cut that out of my rotation. Yeah, that's so, not. That's yeah, not good at all. But, yeah, so Alamo Draft House, good spot to go. All right. Well, we're almost ready to bring on Coach, but before we do, uh, you have a new favorite salsa because um, generally <laughs> sponsors of Pull Tab Sports tend to be condiments. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on Joe Mama's salsa? Fantastic. You know, if you notice how I recommend everything, everything's fantastic. Um, yeah, the truth I mean, is you actually really like both of them. We've the crushed both of everything they gave us is gone. Yep. And so, like, the salsa is no exception. I mean, he's got a fire one, um, mango, which is off the charts, regular. All the products are that we tried because we're a big chip and salsa family, guac. And, you know, so we just crushed the entire case that he sent to us. Did you notice that it's a different tasting salsa at first? It's almost like somebody handed you a Sprite and you thought it was a water. Like, when you first do their salsa, it's a little, like different yeah. and then you just love it you can't it's the only salsa you like yeah i mean it definitely had more flavor that's what you're saying yeah like it, it didn't seem like and we've had some good salsas but i mean it definitely had its unique unique bite and taste to it for sure because yeah. the mango even has a little bit of a bite to it yeah which is great so they call it their flavor wave it starts tart it's easy to remember that because they rhyme and then it has a little kick at the end it's like a magic carpet ride of salsa mm. Joe Mama's. Find it at Cub Foods. They're actually going to be on an end cap because they are also a Minnesota company. Joe Mama's Salsa. All right. Let's, let's bring on the coach, Garrett Raboyne, first Division I hockey coach for the Augustana Vikings. And we're thrilled to have you here. I'm assuming you're up in Sioux Falls right now. No, I'm in, I'm actually in Canada right now. I just popped up for a day, so I was in uh, Detroit Lakes for the fourth, and 
uh, not too long of a drive to get up into Canada. So um, here for about 48 hours and then back down to Sioux Falls. Well, you're in good hands here because Garrity lived in Sioux Falls. Yes, for, I did. I believe lived in the same town that you're, you're... Are you in Harrisburg? I am on the Sioux Falls side, but right on the border there, yes. Yeah, so I lived there for a year when I was helping kind of relaunch the Stampede and the baseball team there. I lived in Harrisburg. So he's going to be able to kind of shortcut this whole world for you. We wanted to start with, let's start with Detroit Lakes, though. I got the WeFest uh, lineup for this year in front of me. And, uh, you know, gun to your head, you got Wednesday, uh, LV Shane, Johnny Cochran. I don't think that's the lawyer. Some band called Uptown. Seems like a kickoff party, a little weaker lineup. Thursday, Jason Aldean. Chris Jansen, Blanco Brown. Friday, we get into Miranda Lambert. Uh, Saturday, Riley Green and a classic Tanya Tucker. What night would you, what, if you only could get one ticket to WeFest this year, is it Al Dean, the kickoff party, Miranda, or Tanya Tucker and Riley Green? No, I'm going, I'm going to Al Dean right away. And then, I mean, that, we fest go sideways as it drags on, so I'm getting in and getting out as quick as I can. <laughs> I, have you? Uh, so, what are your thoughts on the sleeveless flannel shirt? You know, kind of uh, Wallens made it more popular. I find as a country music fan that they're kind of making fun of country music. They're in costume in their jean shorts and sleeveless plaid, or do you think that's okay at a WeFest fest situation? You're a resident. I mean, it, yeah, anything goes at those things. But I think once you start getting yeah into the cowboy boots and cutoffs, uh, they start trying just a little bit too hard for me. So um, I wouldn't go with it, but you'll see plenty of it out there. The uh, and your your dad was the coach of Detroit Lakes. Um, and what was that like growing up? Now you're obviously the first coach in Augustana. What what lessons do you take? from your from your dad back in the day uh certainly a lot of things i think uh, he's just a huge part of my path and you know the one that got me started in hockey uh, he grew up in international falls played for pops ross um had some very successful teams although never made it to the state tournament uh went on to providence college and and uh, a short pro career but spent a lot of time um, with the youth levels and then eventually the high school level. Uh, he was a special education teacher, just like my mom uh, in Detroit Lakes. And I think, you know, what I've taken most of all from him is just why, why you coach. And that's, I think at the core is just to offer players another opportunity, a better opportunity, I should say, and, and really give back to the game. Um, and these college coaches, they don't make a whole lot of money doing it, but the hours they put in um, and the impact they have on their players' lives is uh, is pretty powerful and rewarding. Um, and I'm just fortunate enough to do it at the at the college level. What are some early observations of the Sioux Falls? You know, coming in and south to hockey, they like to say. And um, what what what's your take so far? I mean, what's the community been like, and and how does it feel? It's been great. And uh, obviously it feels like, you know, maybe with the 4th of July, having a couple of days off was uh, my first, you know, chance to recharge, but it felt like we just got off the plane from Boston and it's just been nonstop ever since. So uh, buying houses, selling houses, getting to know the administration and the, all the great people at Augustana. And I've, I mean, I've just been, you know, blown away to be honest by uh, how welcoming everyone is uh, the vibe that Sioux Falls has and, uh, it all starts to make sense why so many people are moving down there and, and why it's just booming. Have you uh, have you taken your kids to that giant candy shop? What city is that in? Oh, that's on the way from it's yeah, in uh, from the Twin right Cities. right outside of the Twin Cities. That yellow, it's a yeah. candy palace or whatever. Yeah. You've been in there yet with them? Yeah, yeah. They uh, they made a pit stop on the way down, uh, loaded up. Uh, <laughs> I think. What do we have? We had some Pez dispensers in there. We had uh, some, my daughter went with some jelly, I don't know, like <laughs> wax chickens or something. I don't know. So we, we definitely made that stop um, and just trying to get, uh, to get the whole crew down there for good now. That helps, you know, because you were in, I guess, Moundsview is where you're coming from. I think what a nice, 
I mean, that's a great piece of leverage, that candy shop, when you're trying to move the family to Sioux Falls, <laughs> like, you know, going in there and, and, and loading them up. But what, uh, what has you most excited about, it's such a unique, it like never happens, getting to build a, a hockey program from scratch. What's, what's that feel like? <laughs> it's uh it's awesome it's exciting it's uh there's a lot of work to be done but i think the 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 best part about it so far has just been the attitude everybody uh from the hockey committee to the the president the ad uh they're going for it uh they're they're all in uh you know got the complete backing of everybody on campus and in the community um and it's just fun to fun to see it unfold i'm i'm, I'm part of things i never thought i'd be a part of from picking out Zambonis, the flooring, the, you name it. Um, but uh, it's it's awesome. And there's sure going to be a day down the line where maybe I take a chance to pause and reflect, but it's not now. What kind of Zamboni did you go with? What, what was the well, – now I, I really <laughs> uh, need to know ele- Electric. I'll, start, I'll just be big electric. <laughs> really? With, I think. <laughs> but, yeah. Wow. Modern man. I like it. Gates, what do you got for, uh, I mean, you're a, you're a Sioux Falls, you know, proud. What do you, what do you got for coach? Yeah. Well, coach, you're going to realize that. I mean, again, I don't know how much time you spent there over even your coaching career with St. Cloud, Minnesota, but the place is great. I mean, especially you got some young kids, right? How old are your kids? Yep. Well, I mean, Uh, nine, seven and three. Well, the facilities they have there from the Shields ice plex to the Denny to you know, they got base, they got everything you want there. It's a great, great setup. So have you, um, John alluded it to a little bit earlier. What what are some of the initial things you're working on right now to get ready for the season or get ready for the uh, launch? What are some of your well, key I, things you need to do? I mean, I think the key thing, first of all, was finding an assistant coach. And I'll have one assistant, Andy Boschetto, who uh, has done great things out east, Wall Street, something with Colgate. Um, he's moving his young family to the Midwest. Uh, and he's him and I are going to, do the recruiting and build this thing together. Um, so staff is one uh, big box, uh, really excited about him. Um, and now building the rink, um, finding our recruits um, and really just, you know, in the, in the early stages, i just really wanted to get down to campus and find out what's working down there. Because if you look at uh, their other sports teams at the NSIC level, they're all extremely successful. Coaches have been around for, you know, 10, 12 years, and, and there's a recipe that's working down there, and I just want to uh, find out what it is, to be honest. Well, I mean, considering the hockey that's going on there right now with the USHL team, and you've got the, uh, the Stanford Power, you've got the Flyers, I mean, what's your thoughts on the advantage you have there with all that type of competitive hockey and the players that will be coming in and out? That's got to help you a little bit, right, with recruiting and taking a look at these kids as they roll in and out from whether it's on the Stampede or the Flyers to, you know, the teams that are coming in. Yeah, I just think, yeah, it's a it's a great advantage. And I think, you know, the experience, not only the players that are there for whether it's the Power, the Flyers, the Stampede, they have they have a great experience and understand you know, why the town is, is so special and, and all the good that's there. But I think it's uh, it's one of those venues, especially with the Denny, uh, where opposing teams come to play. And I think their impression of Sioux Falls and, and, and hockey in South Dakota is, is, a, is a positive one. Um, and with us being just down the road um, in town um, to maybe have the opportunity to, to get them on our campus and, and and show off all we have going with our program, I think, uh, you know, it can only work to our advantage. I was trying, so your assistant, Andy, I was trying to see where your overlap was because he's Colgate, East Coast, like you said. How do you how do you know him? What's the backstory on how you guys kind of became <clears throat> brothers and you add him to your staff? You know, he's, it's such a small fraternity uh, in coaching. Um, and, and he was one of uh, the guys I first connected with uh, at the USA festivals, um, which take place out in Buffalo every summer going on right now. Um, and he was working D3 at the time I first ran into, and we kind of stayed in contact, um, you know, throughout the years. And I've just been able to follow him, you know, as he rose the ranks and he hooked on with, uh, Jason Lammers, um, at Niagara did a tremendous job there. Um, and then moved on to Colgate and he's done a real good job. Uh, just, you know, reshuffling the deck as far as recruiting and, and, uh, you know, and, and improving the brand of hockey that they've been playing out there. Um, and I know for him, uh, he was 
uh, excited when I called that there might be an option to bring his family to Sioux Falls. And I think they're really excited to, to, to raise their children um, in maybe a, a slower paced city um, like Sioux Falls. That's great. Uh, I'm excited this arena you're building, um, if I understand it right, 3,000 seats, Midco. I think, you know, these smaller rinks are going to be electric, right? Like, I can only imagine what that environment's going to be like in that building and how hard it is going to be to get a ticket. And do you see, I know you were part of the group at the U that filled up Mariucci again. Thank you for that. But what, uh, what do you think about having this a little smaller size Thunderdome kind of rink? Are you excited about that? I think it's great. And I think 3,000 seats is perfect. The demand will be there. And I think the the fan experience and the experience for our student athletes is is really where you're going to see it uh, be so powerful. Um, you know, it's just a bummer right now with some of these big rinks that haven't been able to fill up. And they they might even draw quite a few fans, but but it's still it doesn't feel like it's sold out. It's a packed house. So the fact that the noise will be there, that energy will be trapped in the rink, uh, and you know, I just think it, it's going to be awesome for us, for the fans, for the opponents. Um, I think it's going to be a great thing. And as I understand it, you're a big uh, outdoorsman. Is that I would I would in Sioux Falls? That's got to go a long ways. Is that hunting? <laughs> Is it fishing? Is it both? Is it bow hunting? What What are we dealing with yeah, as an outdoorsman? Yeah, yeah. I am I am like probably below average at everything, um, and that's that's just one of those things when you pick coaching as a profession, you don't get a lot of time to, to hone your craft. So I kind of, I bow hunt, I grouse hunt, I fish, I, I do anything I can when, when I have a chance to, um, but I'm, I wouldn't consider myself uh, an expert in any, in any one area. Well, that's good for you, John, because you're pretty much an expert at everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cause John has nothing but time on his hands. Well, what I will tell you is one of, I had not spent much time in Sioux Falls at all before, what, a year ago? Yeah. So Tom's taken me there a few times. And uh, what I love about it and what I think your players are going to love about it is even though you're close to the metro, the Twin Cities metro, there's something about going to Sioux Falls that takes you to like this cowboy town. You know, I know like uh, if I had a, a Copenhagen in, the, every bar and restaurant's handing you a plastic cup with a paper towel already stuck in it, right? It's, yeah. I mean, it is it is Western, and I love that. I think I think your your hockey people are going to. I think it's going to be wild and and fun in Sioux Falls. I I agree with you, and, and you can already see it. And we've we've been able to have a few recruits on campus, and and just kind of kick the tires on Sioux Falls. And, and the more they're able to see, the more people are able to meet, um, the more it becomes a reality. And I think the the more I'm not just talking, the more they're able to feel it for themselves. And, and, and that's it. It's the people it's, there's, there's some, there's a special vibe, you know, as I've been saying around, around the town um, and, and players get a, get a hold of it and they sense it right away when they're down there. I, uh, can we do, we'll do a little tiny bit on the Gophers. You okay with that? I know you're from. I know you're from Wisconsin. I'm a big Wisconsin guy, but that's all right. Go ahead. Um, so obviously, Matsko has been a big uh, a mentor for you. And um, do you have any Bobisms? Like, if you had a couple Post-it notes above your desk that are Bobisms, what would be, give us one or two Bobisms? <laughs> I mean, you got it. You're going to have to go to the boys with that. Um, I try to stay out of the Bobisms. To be honest, although they're <laughs> There are a couple I have holstered. Um, <laughs> maybe not for this podcast, um, but no, he's been he's been tremendous. He's uh, you know it's no secret uh, he's just been wildly successful not only at college hockey but at international competition and he just one heck of a guy. Um, so fortunate fortunate that he took a chance on me as a player and again as a coach. And uh, I mean it's been it's been a heck of a run over the last fifteen years. So. Well, well, it's we'll see what we're going to do without him, eh? Yeah, I got to tell you, well, he's done so much for the Stampede, right? He was a huge part of the history of that program. And I've been lucky enough. I don't know him well, but I've been lucky enough to be around him. And he's just a first-class person, and so is his family. And uh, question, though, and maybe no uh, mannerisms, but what were some key things that he taught you 
Are there any things that he really developed you as, as far as a coach, that things you're going to really lean on with this new role? I think he, he's just, he has such a good feel for people. Um, and, and it, it bodes well for him in recruiting. I think he, you know, he doesn't come in with a, a plan all the time and it's my way or the highway. I think he has a true sense for, for people and relationships and, and, and honesty. Um, and I think he's that way when you play for him and I'm fortunate I've, I've coached for him and played for him. So I know exactly what he's all about. And uh, it all kind of goes back for me. It, you know, this whole thing started with like a handshake agreement where he said, if you come to St. Cloud, I don't have any money. He's like, I, uh, I'm all out. But he said, if you, if you work hard and, 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 uh, you know, you have an impact on our, our culture, our team, I'll take care of you. And he, he's, you know, he far exceeded his word. Um, but it's one of those old school, just handshake agreements that, you know, it's too bad. They're not as common as they used to be. Uh, but he stayed true to his word and, and, and that's him. He's just a genuine guy. Uh, I think what you see is what you get a lot of times and, and players have that comfort level with him where they can come to him and, and they can be honest and know that they're going to get an honest response back. I, you know, Bob had this phrase with the U, uh, 45 seconds of hell. And I was looking at your PIMS in Lincoln, 73, 71, 119. Um, I'd imagine Augustana might have a blue collar on the jersey. Are you looking to, for uh, a kind of a uh, little sandpaper as you're traveling around Canada and everywhere? Or, I mean, am I jumping to conclusions? I think, hey, I think you got to have it in today's game. <laughs> I know uh, even when Coach Monsko took the job over uh, at Minnesota, he said, he said, we're going to play with the puck. We're going to get up and down, but we're going to have that blue collar mentality and, and we're going to have some sandpaper to our game. Um, and that's, and that's me. And, and that's, uh, you know, something I think is huge, especially in this unique opportunity and, and just, you know, something that's never been really done for a really long time, starting a team from scratch is, uh, there's going to be adversity, um, as there is at, at any program. But, um, as we get this thing off the ground, we're going to have to have a pretty special brand of character, uh, you know, a special kid that wants to lean into that and accepts the challenge and, and sees it, you know, as, as I've just mentioned an opportunity and not as much, a uh, uh, a, a roadblock. You know, this logo you have, um, having just finished watching the Stanley cup playoffs, I, you've, you've got basically a logo that is what you look like if you make it all the way <laughs> to the end. I mean, this is a lot to work with Garrett. Like, this guy, I mean, this is like Pat Maroon's dad, or I don't even, it's, yeah. it's awesome. I mean, this, this dog will hunt all day with the boys, won't it? I think so. And anytime you get the, like a mullet kind of feathering <laughs> back like that, I, I mean, I don't know that you can go wrong. It's a unicorn. It's you get that long hair with a feather in, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's between the candy shop on the way up, uh, the logo, I think, I mean, you know, maybe Lucky's. I don't know what bar we're going to these days, but I, I mean, you, go. you've got the a crow. nice, you've got a nice setup. Hey, I would, I'd be curious. You know, college hockey has changed a lot since you have even gone through. What, are, what are the changes, biggest changes you notice about college hockey since you were playing compared to now? Well, I mean, the first, the, the and we're not going to get into it, but the, the restructure, the realignment. I was. I played in the WCHA and, and that, I mean, it was incredible. And, and you guys were all a part of it. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the realignment of the leagues and, and trying to find new uh, rivalries, um, you know, is what it is. And, and you know, uh, that's that's been one of the bigger changes. But I think right now, uh, you know, you, you see there's a younger, a lot of programs have a little younger feel um, in terms of there was, you know, kids weren't committing. Uh, when I was going through it as a player till you're, you know, 18, 19, 20. Now, you, you know, you're seeing uh, juniors in high school committing frequently. Um, you know, a lot of guys are making that step as true freshmen. And then, you know, then going on after one or two years of school to the National Hockey League or professional careers. Um, so that's that's, you know, a little bit of the shift. There's there's other things going on. Uh, and now we're entering the world of the portal and, and NIL and all that stuff, which is uh you know, which is still something we're learning because uh, it is so new to us. 
Uh, Tom, what do you got? We'll finish up with Coach, but you got anything else you want to hit him with? No, just wish you the best. I think Augustan is a fantastic school, and I think you're in a great setup. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Sioux Falls, and I know uh, you'll do a fantastic job. So best of luck to you. Should we finish with our important quiz? Sure. This is high stakes, okay? Yeah. Um, and if you fail at this, we'll cut it out. What? <laughs> What four faces are on Mount Rushmore? And I only am asking you this because I was thinking about asking you this and then I was nervous, but I got it right and Tom got it right. So now there's even more pressure. What four faces are on Mount Rushmore? Go. I mean, Washington, Lincoln, uh, <laughs> Roosevelt. Uh, yep. Am I got three? Yep. Uh, uh, oh, last one's the hardest. Same for Garrity. Uh, um, look at your um, phone. Um, um, Just um, look um, at your um, phone. We can't see your phone. Look at your phone. <laughs> I can't. That's he, he was actually. I, I honestly, I'll give you a hint. He was actually a big time hunter. Oh god! And he wore glasses. He's on a. Wait, wait. He's on the. Is he on the? Who is it? He's on money, isn't he? Teddy Roosevelt. No, he got Roosevelt. Oh, he did. I thought. I thought he didn't. Yeah, yeah. He got Roosevelt. He just, oh, you okay? Sorry. Uh, Jefferson. Oh. oh yeah, so he's kind of like he's a the one that we want to. Yeah. He's a sneaky See, one. Well, pretty soon See, it'll, it'll, it'll be this guy is going to be on there next. So that'd be great. We're fine. Um, yeah. All right, man. We wish you nothing but the best. Uh, kick some ass up there. I know you got this uh, this year where you have to go find the players, go build the tradition. Electric Zambonis. Holy that's, buckets. That's the way it is, man. Candy yeah. shops, electric Zambonis, and a paper towel in your plastic cup at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to South Dakota. Thank you so much oh. for having us. Anything else you want to say or hit us with or no. a message you want to put no. out? I'm excited to have you guys down at mid Arena, fall of 23. We can maybe do a bevy with Rabs. I don't know if, if that's just didn't discontinue the bevy with Bob series, but uh, yeah, that'd be a great idea. You guys having me on? Yeah, man, I'd love that. I I think you're gonna have a blast there. Where they're putting that rink too, just right in the center of campus. It, I mean, that doesn't exist. It's like Princeton has that. You know, there's like a handful of places, but it's gonna be awesome. So that was Coach Garrett Raboyne. No, no, that's not right. It's Raboyne. Yeah, that's interesting. Raboyne. That. Yeah, that's interesting that he said that because uh, that you know, I mean, I'm sure that's been mispronunciated. There's a lot of a angst lot. when you interview Garrett Raboyne that you don't pronounce it right. I had well, it. It sounds like a lot of people have it, right? Yeah. I don't think anybody's doing it right. All right. You know who does it right? You. Pull tap sports. Hell yeah. Right. Um, Except for that the was Rushmore. great. So we got to thank uh, Coach Raboyne for coming on. Any young hockey players looking to be a part of building something? Because that's what this guy's doing. I mean, he is... When you're picking out Zambonis, you are in it. And he's up in Canada looking for players, moving his young family there, pulling another assistant coach and his young family there. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. like uh, hockey pioneers in South Dakota, which makes sense. Great town, as you know. You love it. You've been just kind of a newbie to it, but it's a great, great city. Yeah, you can There's a into... lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, it's a good place. And so good for them adding D1 hockey to the – ushl scene and everything they already have there yeah this has been can you keep a secret a pull tab sports production we'll see you real soon Thanks. bye